Joining us now is J.K. Amazi, a pornography addiction recovery coach. J.K., welcome. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Before you started helping others, you were addicted to pornography yourself. Tell us a bit of your journey. How did it start for you? Thanks for asking, Cindy. <laughs> I've shared this story quite a bit. Um, my first exposure to pornography, unfortunately, was at the age of eight. I ended up finding a pornographic magazine that was um, hidden by our nanny at the time. My parents were in the medical field and they were gone all day. And as a kid who hadn't hit puberty, it was just really shocking. So I knew it was something bad and wrong and I'd probably get in trouble for it, but I had never been spoken to about it. So we didn't speak much about sex uh, in our home. So there was just this chemical reaction I experienced, excitement, um, the taboo nature of it, and I just kept going back whenever I had the opportunity. When I hit puberty, about 13, 14 years old, and I discovered masturbation, that was when I realized my, my I equated pornography to something really good. And unfortunately, as I went through my teenage years, I started using pornography as a coping mechanism. So breakups, rejections, bullies at school, anything that happened, low grades, bad grades, I could count on pornography to make me feel better. And over the years, that had a very negative impact on, on my life. When did you say to yourself, maybe I'm addicted and have a problem with this? When I was about 17 years old, and it was my um, first year in college, I realized that I was spending an inordinate amount of time on pornography. Like I could, I could start at 10 p.m. at night and keep watching pornography till about 3 a.m. in the morning. Sounds crazy, but there are a lot of men, unfortunately, today who do that. Um, when I realized that I was spending my money on chat rooms with women to see them naked, um, and uh, a few times I hit my credit limit on my card, um, and I couldn't pay my rent, and I had to reach out to my mom and tell her that my account was overdrawn again. So I would say it was a gradual process. You know, parents asking me what was wrong, always being broke, not having a dating life. And eventually, um, I started experiencing some of the physical side effects. Uh, one of those things is called, I didn't know what it was then, but it's PIED, which is porn induced erectile dysfunction, which meant that I could not have normal intimate situation with a real life human partner. I only could when I was viewing pornography um, virtually. And is the addiction part something you ever talked about with your peers or heard about from any source? That's the interesting thing about um, struggling with something like this. Due to the shame and the stigma that's attached to pornography and certain sexual behaviors, it's very difficult to talk to anyone about it. In fact, one of the characteristics of pornography addiction is um, the shame that you experience because in your head you think that everybody else watches it and it's so pervasive But you feel that you're the only one who is not able to control yourself and that makes you feel quite helpless uh, So it wasn't until I stumbled across a forum many years later with literally hundreds of thousands of guys <laughs> Uh, who were struggling with this and it shocked me to realize that there were so many people struggling with it and Also, it's I think it's also important to kind of define Pornography and that that definition keeps changing. It's basically anything that could any uh, a visual that could stimulate you sexually uh, so it is pervasive and um one of the, I, I would call it an argument that I often use, Cindy, is that any form of media which can have an impact on an individual, regardless of their, whether they are literate or illiterate, re regardless of their mental health, regardless of their age, um, anything that can change the way they think, that can get them aroused, um, is not something consensual. And there are a lot of people who have arguments about pornography, even individuals who argue that it's um, even educational.
But the truth is that it's everywhere and anyone who views it has an immediate reaction. It's almost impossible to find someone who has a neutral reaction to pornography. Other drugs generally, you know, drug use escalates. You start off mm -hmm. with, with less or softer substances and, you know, it gets worse and worse. Is it the same with pornography? Uh, it depends on the individual situation. However, eventually the amount of dopamine that's being released is not enough to give you the feeling that you need. So you keep watching more and more disturbing pornography, eventually getting to a place where you watch material that's not in tune with your values. So there's that psychological impact, uh, but there's also uh, an impact on your brain. Um, the most common one being the impact on your prefrontal cortex, which is uh, responsible for executive function, decision making, impulse control. So imagine what happens. There's studies that show that compulsive porn users uh, have less gray matter in their prefrontal cortex and less uh, neural connections. So this impacts different areas of your life, decision making, um, self-control, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can only guess that that impact must be worse the younger you start, if you still have a developing brain. Is that right? Oh, certainly. Um, most of these studies now are being done on teenagers and adolescents, uh, pretty much. And it is disturbing the impact it's having on them. Um, their ability to focus is already impacted by social media and things like TikTok and some of the, the media out there. When you throw pornography into the mix, it's also changing uh, the structure of our society because so many young men particularly do not feel the need to go out and, um, and date. I said at the outset that this isn't something that's talked about a lot, which is why I wanted to cover this topic today. Why is it so hard to talk about? And do you have suggestions, I guess, particularly to parents about how to broach the topic? That's a great question. Um, it's difficult to speak about. Obviously, the, the first reason is, is because of our society, but there are some beliefs. One of those beliefs is that pornography is its pervasiveness, which we spoke about. When you believe that um, it's everywhere and you can't avoid it, first of all, you feel hopeless because you feel that even if I'm watching a Netflix show or something on HBO Max, I'm going to be exposed to it. Um, another thing is when you believe that talking about sex or doing certain things is bad and uh, you shouldn't do that, well, that only brings about shame. And the more you engage in this, the more shame that it, it uh, cultivates. This doesn't just affect the porn user. It affects parents and those who are close to the porn user because they also experience shame. They don't know how to speak about it uh, with their kids or with their partners. The advice that I give clients and often a lot of parents who end up in our inbox and getting on calls with our, with our coaches is to let them know that it's it's sad to say, and it's very difficult for me to say this, but if you are a parent, it is not a matter of if your child is going to be exposed to pornography. It's really a matter of when. And the way to have the conversation is not to demonize pornography or make it something that is bad because that will bring up shame, but to realistically let them know the damaging impact of pornography on their life and on their on uh, intimacy and building a relationship is finding out what they ideally want. Like they might say, like, yeah, I want to live happily ever after with this person. Say, well, porn will take that away from you, um, and it's not real. That's the most important thing. It's not education. It's not real. It may feel good, but that's a trick, and that's not reality. That's actually a really important point because I was looking at some statistics earlier and a survey of young adults showed that about a quarter of them thought pornography was helpful in learning about how to have sex and over half the boys and over a third of the girls believe that pornography was a realistic depiction of sex. JK, if people watching this think they have a problem or know someone who has a problem, what's the first step? What should they do? Well, the first step is having a conversation with your partner, your friend, your child, whoever that is, um, about this and asking them about their porn use. Um, and a lot of times due to the shame, 
that loved one or that person might be quite resistant to this. So it's it's helpful to give them some access to some resources that could educate them on the dangers of pornography. Um, there are great websites out there. Um, one of those that I'm not affiliated with, but has probably some of the best research on and points on this is, is a site called Your Brain on Porn. And of course, um, I'll, I'll plug my podcast, which is called the Porn Reboot Podcast with 400 episodes, where I talk about how you can end your out of control sexual behavior and how you can help your loved one do that. Uh, finally, um, there's also the option of therapists. And if anyone's seeking a therapist, it's very important to find a therapist who is trained or has experience with sexually compulsive behaviors. So specifically, look for a certified sex addiction therapist, a CSAT. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Uh, lots of therapists today are available um, via Skype or via Zoom. Um, I will say one final thing that's very important. If your loved one is viewing pornography, let's say you're a spouse of a loved one, I want to make it clear that uh, you're not the problem. It's not you. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just that pornography is so powerful and so pervasive, um, and it's helpful to understand that so you can manage some of the emotions that come with it. All right. Thank you so much, JK. Appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me. Coming up next, the connection between pornography and sex trafficking. But first, in America Q&A, we ask if you think pornography is harmful to those who watch it. No. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. It's causing some mental changes in our society for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Not necessarily. I think it promotes violence and sex trafficking. I agree. 100% <laughs> not good. Yeah, I don't want to answer that. It's like an addiction, I think, and they're probably trying to escape something. It can consume your day. I'm sure it's very addicting, and especially for our young children who have such easy access with phones and everything, I think it's very harmful. Probably depends on the degree. Yes. No, it's not harmful. I feel like it's a choice whether you want to do it or not. Yeah, it's personal choice. No comment. It, it, it messes with anybody psych psychologically. Oh, that's more of a mental thing, I would say. I have no opinion on that. No, I don't either. Everyone's got their choice of life, not with children. That's ridiculous, no. <laughs> Depending how you, how you go about it. There are things in porn that sets higher standards for what's expected in the bedroom. <laughs> no, I don't. It might change you. But is it for the negative or the positive? I, I don't know, and I won't judge someone for any of their actions. It just like disables you. The, the younger generation that we have now, that's all they know. You couldn't see anything that wasn't inappropriate, you know, that was inappropriate unless you watch Channel 13. I have no idea, but when you get down to children, we're supposed to protect them. Some people can be hurt by it. Just everything in moderation. Um, as a person who does pornography if you do have a goal you have a focus you will your mind will get distorted from that it can build like an unhealthy obsession i've read that it affects uh performance it takes away from the real intimate acts that humans can share psychologically changes the way maybe you have intimacy a big percentage of no it just gives you kind of false ideologies i have two young adult sons and yes i do think it is we don't really talk about the harmful impact of it it depends what age group um, like my mom said, it does depend on the age. You've seen one, you've seen it all. Don't look too much into it. 